What are you looking at? You thought it would be Coach Coop, huh? This is my channel now. Before we get into the video, I just want to remind you guys that I have some new Miami themed shirts on the merch store and you can check them out by clicking the top link down in my description. I really think that this is some of the most unique Canes game day gear on the market. You're gonna love them. What's going on Canes fans? Welcome to the Miami Hurricanes vs Texas A&M Aggies preview video. A lot of things are going to be different around here now that Coop is gone. I think you will like it much more. Oh man, sorry about all that guys. Let's just take it from the top and start from scratch because I have no idea what Sebastian just said. So here we go. What's going on, Canes fans? Welcome to the Miami Hurricanes versus Texas A&M preview video. That's exactly what he said, isn't it? All right, all right. Enough with the jokes. Let's dive into this thing for real. Just do not forget to watch this video all the way to the end because I do have another celebrity guest picker. And also, make sure that you show up for my Friday night call-in show this Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern time because no one predicted the correct score for last week's game. And that means that the $500 score prediction contest is still on. So all you have to do is call into the show on Friday night, give your official score prediction for the Miami versus Texas A&M game. And if you get it correct, you win $500. And one last thing, do not forget to leave a like on this video and any comment because that will officially enter you to win a free t-shirt from the Coach Coop merch store. And that's literally all you have to do, like and comment, and I'm picking random winners every single week. And the winner from last week's video is Christopher Leonard. I'm going to pop his comment up right here on the screen. Christopher, I sent you a DM on Twitter, my man, to get your address and the details of which search you would like. Congratulations and best of luck to you guys for this one. So the number 13 ranked 2-0 Miami Hurricanes are taking on the number 24 ranked Texas A&M Aggies at Kyle Field in College Station on ESPN at 9 p.m. Eastern Time this Saturday. And yes, that's right. I said kickoff at 9 p.m. It's going to be crazy. And just a heads up, in case you haven't already heard, College Game Day will not be making the trip to this game. Last week, after the Aggies dropped that game to App State, they decided to go to the App State versus Troy game instead. So, thanks a lot, Texas A&M. But it is what it is. Whatever. Two big questions going into this game is, are the Aggies... Not as good as everyone thought they were. I mean, they came into the season very highly ranked, but they dropped that game to App State. And also, are the Canes any good at all? Because even though we're 2-0, we've not faced any real competition up to this point. Now, let's give credit where credit is due. App State, I believe, is a little bit better than everyone thinks they are. And they are known for upsetting big teams. And they came into this game with a very physical heavy run game and a lot of Canes fans are wondering if this is the blueprint to beating the Aggies. And just to give you some context when I say a heavy run game, the Texas A&M Aggies had a total of 186 yards in that game and App State had 181 just in rushing yards. That Aggie D line is big and physical, no doubt. But at the same time, there's also a lot of young guys in that unit, and they looked pretty gassed in the fourth quarter last week. However, it really seems like their biggest issues are on offense. Now, I know that we're only two games into the season, but they currently rank 114th nationally in rushing and 69th in passing. That's not very impressive. They just can't seem to get much going on that side of the ball, and many people are wondering if maybe we see quarterback Haynes King benched for the LSU transfer Max Johnson in this game, and 
I'm going to keep it real with Canes fans. I don't really know how I feel about that because I personally believe that Max Johnson gives them a better chance to win games this season. But throwing him out there to start this game against Miami, I, I, I don't really know what Jimbo is thinking right now, what's going through his head. And it makes it even tougher for us because we kind of have to prepare for both of those guys, even though you know he's saying he believes in Haynes King and what he's capable of. So we're just going to have to see. But that quarterback situation for the Aggies is definitely interesting. One thing is for sure, no matter what, the home of the 12th man will be rocking and they will be pissed when Miami rolls into town. They've been averaging around 95,000 fans these last two games. But let's talk about the Canes for a moment. A lot of people feel like we're being disrespected in this matchup, but I personally don't think so. I'm the type of fan that wants to earn that respect. And if we're keeping it real, which is what we always try to do, we haven't beaten an SEC opponent since 2013 when we beat the Gators. That's right, it's been nine years. I don't blame these places for still having us as the underdogs because historically speaking, there's a few exceptions here and there, but we don't typically step up to the plate in these big time games. Given App State's success running the ball against the Aggies last week, will we try to do more of the same? Or will we see Josh Gaddis open up the playbook a little bit and allow TBD to take more vertical shots? At this point in time, it's hard to say. Now, it's possible that pounding the rock and running more often is just our identity on offense. And that's not necessarily a bad thing going into this game, at least, considering what App State did to them last week. Uh, but there's also the fact that, you know, the Aggies are going to prepare for this game and see the issues and things that they had last week. So they're going to try to make some changes. Now, can they correct all of those issues in just one week? Highly unlikely. But there's also the fact that Tyler Van Dyke in multiple interviews has said, you guys have seen nothing yet. This is only a small part of our offense that we've unleashed over the last two weeks. So again, it's going to be very interesting to see what our offense looks like on Saturday. Now, one fun fact that I do want to plug in here is the fact that Henry Parrish, who is currently RB number one for us, he's currently actually third in the ACC in total rushing yards, but I'm, I'm getting off track here. Fun fact about Henry Parrish, he actually played against the Aggies last year as the running back for Ole Miss. And Ole Miss actually won that game 29 to 19. Now, I don't think that he racked up a ton of yards in that game, but it's just interesting that he played them last year and beat them. And now he's playing for Miami against the Aggies again. And that also goes for the running back coach, Kevin Smith, who was at Ole Miss, who is now at Miami. I just find that very interesting. So let's take a brief look at the history between these two teams. Miami and A&M have played three times in total, with Miami leading that series 2-1. to one. And their last matchup took place way back in 2008, where the Canes won 41-23. to 23. And let's also put a little graphic image up here on the screen and take a quick look at some of the average stats so far this season for both of these squads. And just keep in mind that I round these numbers up or down respectively, so no .4 or .6. So, so far this season, points per game average for Texas A&M coming in at 23, Miami a whopping 50. But just keep in mind, this is a, a little inflated due to the Bethune-Cookman game. Points allowed against them per game so far this season, Texas A&M a, a pretty darn respectable 9, Miami coming in at 10. Average yards gained so far this season, 342, Miami 519, and yards allowed against them per game, the Aggies 257 and Miami 291. Now, a stat that I find very interesting here that's not up on your screen is the average rushing yards allowed per game, which for the Aggies is 144 and the Canes 63. But now let's transition over to three keys to a victory for both of these teams. And just keep in mind right quick also that there are way more than three keys to a victory, way more than three things that need to happen for both of these squads to walk away with a W. But these are just three things that stand out to me personally. Kicking it off at number one for the Canes, our corners cannot come out and get burned all night long. 
Opposing team's receivers were getting some good separation over the last two weeks, and the Aggie receivers will be much faster than they were. They, there were also multiple dropped picks, and you have to make those plays on a big stage like this. Number two, our kicking game will have to be on point. Obviously, touchdowns are better than field goals, but we need to be walking away with points on as many drives as possible. We will also be relying on Headley to flip the field for us to make it even tougher on that Aggie offense. And lastly, we absolutely cannot afford to get shell-shocked in this one. If Texas A&M goes up one or two touchdowns, that crowd will absolutely explode. We need to start fast and stay focused. If we get down, do not get discouraged. And that's something that we've struggled with in the past. So let's see if this team is different. I also want to add that Tyler Van Dyke needs to have a fantastic game this Saturday. Now, of course, it's a team effort, so everyone must play well. And Tyler Van Dyke has not played bad up to this point. I'm not saying that. However, if he's going to be looked at as the leader on this offense, there were all these off-season Heisman talks. This has got to be a game where TVD comes out almost like he did against NC State last year and just absolutely goes off. And now three keys to a victory for the Aggies in this game. And coming in at number one is whoever is at quarterback, whoever that might be, needs to connect on more deep shots. This, is, this one is two-sided for both of the QBs, like I said, and the receivers, because they got to catch the ball, of course. King's longest completion last week was 19 yards. I mean, maybe if you are consistently completing those over and over all night, it's okay. But the Aggies only totaled 186 yards of offense. Now, to be fair, a lot of that was due to the time of possession, which App State absolutely controlled. But still, they're going to have to connect on some deep balls, which unfortunately, I do expect them to take multiple shots Again, because our corners have kind of been vulnerable the last two weeks. Number two, the Aggies have to be the more physical team. App State pushed a lot of their guys around. And honestly, in my opinion, Texas A&M got bullied in that game. And lastly, this one might sound silly, but they will need to use last week's loss as motivation. A lot of teams start to doubt themselves and get down after a tough loss like that. There's... So much talk within the sports world, the media, and fans about how the Aggies are not what everyone thought they were, not as good as they should be or as good as everyone expected. And that can play a big part on the mental game, which absolutely plays a big part in football. So they've got to use that as motivation or otherwise it could be a very long night for them. And now for the moment you all are actually really probably waiting for uh, my pick for this game and of course my celebrity guest pickers pick for this game but before we do that you already know we have to take a look at the completely pointless doesn't mean a thing ESPN matchup predictor which I'm going to conveniently place over uh, Jimbo Fisher aka Bozo going to place it over his head right here for your viewing pleasure so uh, ESPN has Miami's win percentage chance coming into this game at 53.6% and the Aggies at 46.4%, which I'm going to keep it real actually does surprise me. Again, I know that the Canes are 2-0. I know that the Aggies just lost to App State, but at College Station, uh, it's very interesting. And what makes this even more interesting is when we take a look at the betting lines, Last I checked, the Aggies are around a five and a half point favorite in this one. So the numbers aren't really adding up. So we're just going to see who the better team is this Saturday. And I also believe that the the overall uh, over under for this one is around 48 and a half points. So do with that what you wish. Uh, but otherwise, guys, you know what? It's time to introduce my special celebrity guest picker. Let's do this.
introducing a man that honestly needs no introduction but i'm gonna do it anyways you might know him from life wallet or maybe msp recovery or possibly cigarette racing but without a doubt canes fans are definitely aware of the new stadium talks that have been kicked off by him and his family introducing my special celebrity guest picker for this week John Ruiz! Y'all show him some love in the comment section. John, thank you very much. I know that you're a busy man, so I'm not going to take up too much of your time tonight, but I know that I really appreciate this, and Canes fans do as well. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate that. By so, the way, I think you can maybe get a job with the Miami Heat announcing the uh, the threes. There you go. Yeah, I keep saying I'm looking for a hype man job. So if you ever hear about any openings with the Heat or the Canes, I'll be the guy on the sideline, you know, hyping everybody up, keeping everybody, you know, into the game. That's that's what I love to do, man. Um, but uh, I, I'm going to keep this brief for you. But the first thing that I have to ask you, because Canes fans w will not stop asking me about it if I don't ask you. Any updates on the stadium stuff since the renderings? I know that your son Johnny is kind of, you know, leading the way, the charge with all this stuff, but I got to ask you because that's what all the questions are going to be. So, so no, great question. I think what people need to really understand is that the stadium is probably only about 10% of the project there at Tropical Park. Um, mm -hmm. Our vision, and I think rightfully so, is Dade County Public Parks <clears throat> and Dade County Public Schools don't have the ability uh, to have, you know, large amounts of people to play baseball and football and basketball. You know, a lot of these schools are old. A lot of these schools have, you know, very uh, unsophisticated technological systems. They're run down. Uh, and, you know, I'd like to see where all the youth can go play basketball at a state of the art, you know, gymnasium, play volleyball. Uh, now pickleball is coming into the picture. I can just assume, you know, before we know it, you'll have a lot of teams as it relates to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, we just want to see, uh, you know, something really nice, something like the, you know, Disney World Wide World of Sports. That's kind of what we've envisioned. And I think people are losing sight of what it, this is really all about. This is about getting a 270-acre tract of land and making it better, making it better for everybody, for the community. This is not uh, a, a play to get public land for free or anything like that. And I think people need to understand, which is something that, that maybe is troubling for some, is, look, I or my kids or ourselves, we could do just nothing and, you know, just live and go about our lives, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or we can try to help the community. And, you know, people need to kind of start opening up their their minds as to why we're doing this. I've always, 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 since I've been able to, because if you know a little bit about my story, uh, you know, I never had any kind of wealth. I was able to acquire it, you know, throughout time and with a lot of luck and with a lot of hard work. And I've always tried to help the youth and the elderly. <clears throat> and in my opinion, we have a lot of problems, you know, with drugs and crime uh, and kids not doing the things that they should do. And this is the opportunity for me. And what I've told my kids to do all along is to give back. Uh, I see way too many, you know, people losing their lives because of drinking and they get into issues. You know, I've been front and center in a lot of the opioid epidemic. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's sad to see when young kids pass away. Uh, and, and if we can help that to save just one life, it'd be great. And I think this park with after school programs and the ability to get kids to do what you're doing now right so people don't understand how difficult what you're doing now you have to set up you have to have a script yep. look how nice your background is uh you're you're getting people motivated just like you you said and that's a good thing you know that's one of the reasons why i i'm a, I'm a super big fan of yours uh i think you know what you're doing is spectacular uh, i've been in production for probably 20 something years I understand that I get it and giving all this back to the kids is important. So let's get to the stadium itself. <clears throat> the reason why I believe the stadium is such a great idea in Tropical Park is number one, it's very close to the University of Miami. At the end of the day, it is the University of Miami. 
Some people say, well, why don't you let the university? They should have planned for land, so on and so forth. Land in Coral Gables is more expensive than just probably anywhere in Florida. Right. Maybe perhaps West Palm Beach. Uh, but ultimately, you have Coral Gables, Pinecrest. Uh, you have, you know, unincorporated Dade County. You have Doral. You know, there's so much migration coming here, especially after COVID. And I think that's our best shot to get, you know, a lot of people into the stadium. There's a lot of people that want it. And I know that, you know, between grandparents, you know, the, the, the grandchildren and obviously the parent of the grandchild, it's a great way to really get people out to watch the football game. There's nothing nicer than to have you and your dad and, and your grandkid and, you know, the, the father of that grandchild to have that tradition. You know, we need to understand the University of Miami is a different animal. It is. Uh, yeah. It's got, you know, it's got 10, 11,000 students, you know, uh, uh, at any given moment, you know, every year, year after year. So one of the other things we're trying to do is get uh, sort of the graduate schools there, maybe the law school there and the medical school, because that's giving back to the community also. People don't understand also that you health saves a lot of lives. Uh, Jackson Hospital saves a lot of lives. To be able to get helicopters to land there with trauma patients, you know, and get people to, to learn medicine and to help and, and to be able to participate in a number of things, not just sports. You know, there's a lot of uh, back end to the sports. That's kind of our vision. And I just think that your platform is one of the, the, the better platforms to get the, the voice out. Yeah, and I appreciate that. And I'm sure as you're aware, uh, I'm a big fan of this project and I love this idea. That's why I keep on continuing to put out positive videos about this, trying to inform people as best I can. And I think two things really that I personally feel like, at least from my point of view, that people are forgetting or not understanding is that it's very early on in this, right? Yes. I mean, with all of the planning and everything, and it takes a while to make these things happen. And number two, as you already touched on, it's a much bigger project than just a stadium. There's tons of things that are being put into this and a lot of people would benefit from it. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm very excited about it and a, a huge fan of it. And I know that you know, I'm a big fan of your Twitter account, by the way. I'm oh, all yeah. about holding people accountable for the things they say, not hiding behind profile pictures. And, you know, there's burner accounts and all this stuff. So I know you don't need positive reinforcement from me, but just keep at it. Don't let the trolls get to you on Twitter. I don't speak for all Canes fans, but I know that the majority of us are very excited about this idea. And the Canes fans, a lot of them that aren't, just being honest, in my opinion, are because we're not really used to having a lot of nice things and things go our way. So they're they're almost afraid to get excited about it and then it not happen and being let down. So I think that's where a lot of the negativity comes from. So, so look, here's a good thing. I'm, I'm not a guy that you can dissuade from doing things. You know, I've been doing this my entire life. Uh, every single project I've ever been involved in has been a difficult project. It's one that people think can't happen. They don't believe in it. That's been the entire story of my life. Um, and that's sort of like some of the people that know me think that that actually motivates me because it's kind of like a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think is extremely important is, you know, people really need to become as informed as possible to make decisions. You know, I have no problems with people uh, criticizing, but I just want people to criticize with proper information. Bingo. Now, you don't want a park, uh, you don't want a, you know, a tropical park to have a stadium or, or a renovation. I'm okay with that. I mean, I think everybody's entitled to their opinion. But I think when you do that, at least have the information of what our vision is. Now, if you tell me that you're not for helping the youth, that you're not for after school programs, that you're not for having better health care and having places where people have jobs, and improving the all surrounding area, then I'll say, okay, well, I listen to you. But, you know, many a times what people say is like, let's save the parks. So when I write back to them, okay, what have you, what have you done to save the park? I mean, do you go there? Uh, look, I have a lot of people that, that go around canals picking up just debris, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, this is just my personal opinion. I respect everybody else's. I've been to Tropical Park. It's super rundown. Um, the county, quite frankly, not in their defense, they don't have the resources to put and pump money into 275 acres, you know, or yeah, 200 <clears throat> if they start pumping money in, what do you think the taxpayers are going to say? You're throwing money away. 
So this is an opportunity <laughs> where we know we can bring in really big companies like, you know, U Health and, and uh, like Texas Live. We can bring something there that's good for everybody, that creates a tax base, that creates revenue for the county, that provides jobs. And I just don't see the negative of it. But again, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Exactly. I, I love it. Absolutely love it. So I, I'll transition over to just some quick Canes talk for just a moment, and then we'll get your pick for the Texas A&M game. Uh, are you going to the game in College yeah. Station? <clears throat> yes, I am. You are? Okay. Have you ever been there before? I've never been there before. Okay. I have not either. I'm going to be honest. I'm a little bit jealous because I wanted to yeah. experience it, you know, a hostile environment like that. It's it's uh, it's going to be an amazing atmosphere there. Why even, aren't you going? Why even considering you? their loss last week. But Why aren't you going? Uh, I just couldn't link. I have too many things family related that are holding me back here in Tennessee, but I am going to make a couple of games down in hard rock this year. Okay, so. Well, uh, you're welcome in, in our suite whenever you come down to hard rock. I, I, I appreciate that very much. Cause, and that actually was going to lead me into the next thing I was going to ask <clears throat> you guys did like a big giveaway for this game, right? Like giving away free tickets and stuff. We gave away 125 tickets. Wow. Memory, so okay. That's awesome. And I think that is, uh, do you know, is Danny Boy Kane coming down there to join you? Because he was my guest picker last week for the yes, series. He is. So yeah, he is. He is. That's he is. awesome. I hope he has a good time. He's such a good dude. He, he loves Miami. Nobody, I don't care what anybody says about that guy. His passion for the University of Miami is unmatched, in my and opinion. He, and I think his knowledge, too. I mean, he yep. knows everything. He enough. does. He does. Very uh, good guy. So uh, did you grow up a, a Canes fan? So my story is, and I'll tell you real quick because I think it's somewhat interesting. I started UM as a 17-year-old, had never been to a college football game, really didn't know anything about college football. I knew about professional football because that's what I watched. So my first game, I go to the student section. UM kicks the ball off. Uh, two players for FSU on the receiving end. I didn't know either of their names. One of them catches the ball, laterals the ball across the field to the other side. <clears throat> that player gets the ball. He runs it back the entire way for a touchdown. You know, probably 80,000 people just going crazy. <laughs> and the number on his jersey was number two. I don't know if you remember that far back because you're a young guy, but it was Deion Sanders, which in my opinion, probably the best, best football player ever in the history of uh, professional football. Yep. Yeah. Like, as you said, I'm, I'm 32 years old, so I didn't get to watch too much back in that time, but uh, I've seen some clips and heard some stories for sure of what and he was capable you of. Else, you know, because it's just life is somewhat ironic. My favorite player at the University of Miami when I was there was Melvin Brighton. Um, I just thought he had a knack for the ball. I mean, he was just amazing. I, I had him in a bunch of classes. Uh, and, you know, he didn't know who I was. You know, I was pretty much just a 17, 18-year-old student. Right. Uh, but now I have a great relationship with Melvin. You know, he comes to my house all the time. We talk about, you know, the Canes. We talk about a bunch of other businesses. And he actually connected me with Deion Sanders uh, because we're trying to help, like, all the black schools with, you know, funding and, and just making things better. You know, that's mm -hmm. what I'm about. You know, people criticize a lot. I think when people really understand who I am and what I do, uh, they'll understand that I just, you know, I'm, I'm a guy that has been fortunate enough to to do well economically, and I like to give back to help. That's what I do. Yep. And I, I, I bet you've got some really good stories. We need to bring you and your sons onto the show one day, because I bet you guys, I bet you've got some good stories you could tell. I do. So let, let's transition over here and, and wrap this thing up, because I know that you have a meeting or an appointment that you got to get to. Uh, um, so uh, prediction yeah. pick for this game uh now what i do is to take some of the pressure off of my guest i will make my pick first and give a score prediction but i want you to know that you do not have to give an actual score prediction you can do just a pick if if that's all you're comfortable with some people are weird about jinx and it and you know don't want to give numbers and stuff like that and i fully respect that so f for me i actually received a lot of hate because i have predicted the canes to lose this game all off season I've done a ton of streams about it and videos, reasons why they're why they're going to lose this one. And I, I've really sat back and studied the Aggies over these last couple of weeks. And believe it or not, 
I have actually went back and changed my mind and predicting the Canes to win a tight one, 31 to 27. Just one quick disclaimer. This is not based off of just the App State game. So a lot of people are going to think I'm backpedaling. You know, I'm letting my Canes pride get in the way. That's not the case. I just think from what I've seen, this team is in fact beatable. And I think that we have the the type of athletes and coaching staff to make this happen. For me, it's just going to have to be that the stage is not too big for us because this is a, a big game for a lot of young guys that haven't been in this hostile of an environment. And we, we have to win the mental war in this game, in my opinion. We cannot let it get in our heads. We can't get shell-shocked. We can't get down early and let it get to us. But I think this is the beginning of the downward spiral for the Aggie football program, and I think it's time to expose Jimbo Fisher. John, what do you think? So here's my thoughts. Um, number one, we need to control the line on both sides of the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the factors uh, for UM that have to play well is Akeem Masador. Uh, you Who will know, be back, a, thank goodness. He's a beast. Uh, Parrish has been doing amazing. He's a really, really good back. Uh, you know, has a, a real true uh, ability to find the holes and be, you know, very evasive. I feel like he's a little bit like Emmett Smith. Uh, okay. I really like him a lot. Uh, I also think that my favorite player, and I've said this already publicly, is Xavier Restrepo. I think Restrepo is going to be a huge factor in this game. Uh, I think, in my opinion, UM's got to stay short here and there and, you know, really mix things up. Uh, I don't see that the Aggies have a great offense, you know, and therefore it's struggling. Yeah. So I, I feel that our defense has to play pretty well, not exceedingly well. And I think our offense has to play pretty well. Um, I don't think it's going to be as high scoring of a game as what you have 31, 27. I'm going to say UM is going to win 24 to 17 against the Aggies. That's my prediction. And I will tell you the player that I think needs to really shine for us to do well against the Aggies. And that's Agudi. Agudi is a physical specimen. I think he's starting to learn uh, sort of the, the lanes of, you know, where he needs to be. Mm -hmm. And he's a very fast player. I think we need to control the, the ends, you know, for, from the defensive point of view and just control the outside rushing we have some really you know good players on the inside and i feel that the line's got to do a better you know job on the offensive side than they did with uh, southern mississippi um because they can't get to tiger <clears throat> my other comment and last comment is uh and you know tyler is one of our main nil athletes um he needs to look around the field a little more. I feel that, you know, he's focuses too much on the player that he's going to uh, throw to. And then everybody's almost like, you know, focusing on that player. Right. Um, again, look, I, I also think, you know, that, that's my prediction, but I also think that sometimes us hurricane fans and just fans in general, they expect too much too soon. Very I mean, true. Very Mario, true. Mario Cristobal is, and sorry for the French, he's a badass. The guy's great. <laughs> They got an amazing coaching staff. You know, Alonzo Highsmith is there. Uh, Jason Taylor is there. I mean, they, they got some really, really, really good uh, coaching, and they motivate the kids. But, you know, let's face it. They've played eight quarters under, you know, his uh, guide, and we need to give it a little bit of time. Teams have to gel. You know, it takes time. If you remember back when the LeBron James, you know, Dwayne Wade and – and Bosch were together, they have to gel. They got to start to understand mm -hmm. each other. Very but I do think I agree with you, Coop, that this is the, the real first test in terms of the pressure, being in a hostile environment, uh, you know, being uh, up against a team that, you know, just got beat and they have a lot to prove. Uh, but I think we're going to uh, bode very well. And the reality of the situation mm -hmm. is not to backpedal, but we could very easily also lose this game. I understand that's always the case with every football game, but it actually worries me more because they lost to App State. Kind of, you know, with their backs against the wall, you know, they're going to be coming out. They're seeing all this hate on the media. So that actually makes me more worried about this game, which sounds 
opposite since I just predicted a win. Uh, it's just I, I, I see the potential that we have. If we can just put it all together on Saturday night, it would be crazy, man. John? But, but Cook, I, I think, you know, some last words. I know we, we both got to go. So, some last words. I think also, you know, like I've said all along, and, and I know this from my own career, you know, a lot of people look good on paper, but you got to be able to perform, right? Mm -hmm. So it happens to be the trials. Some people have like these great accolades, and then you go and you try cases against them, you argue hearings, and you say, oh, you know, they're, they're not as good as the paper. And then others don't have any, and you say, wow, that those, those people are really good. I think at the end of the day, the players that may look great on paper, they got to perform. They got to perform on the field. You know, that's the difference between theory and reality. And at the end of the day is who wants it more? My favorite all-time player in any sport ever is Michael Jordan. I know he's not from your era, but the reason why is not just because he had greatness, because he had that mental toughness, which is the way that I think. I, I, I like to go into everything with mental toughness. You're not going to beat me unless I beat myself. I'm going to give myself the best chance. I like it. Very, very well said. Hey, John. My oh, man, I'm going to let you get out of here. Thank you again so much. You know what we got to get you to do, though, before you head out, right? Absolutely. Throw it up. Hey, John, appreciate you, my man. Okay, appreciate you. Have a good night.